Singapore Home Brew on Money FM 89.3. Let's bring on our guests now. Marina Lee is the Assistant Director at the Pungal Regional Library, and Michael Koh, the Chairperson of the NLB Advisory Committee, joining us today to talk about the new Pungal Library, opened its first two floors to the public on the 30th of January, dedicated offerings to children on both levels, and will also serve the needs of uh, folks who have uh, physical disabilities. Uh, Verena, let's start with you. Give us an overview. What, is, uh, what does this new amazing space look like? We have um, two big floors um, and just reserved entirely for children and young families. For the very young, we have the toy library. Mm -hmm. So we're not able to loan out toys, but you know, we have toys for different kinds of them, all uh, smack in the middle um, on first floor, where children, when they come in, they could all play the toys there. Yeah. And then we have uh, Stories Come Alive room, where we have floor and wall projections, all put onto the lovely walls. So you could come in and you get immersed in uh, storytelling, um, that's projected on the screens. Wow. And on second floor, we have Spark Lab. Spark Lab is an uh, entirely new um, feature where we have brought in content from Smithsonian Institution from the Washington, D.C. Oh, is that right? Yes. Wow. So um, they have brought in um, content from there. And what we are trying to do is uh, encourage everybody to be young engineers and young scientists, learning to solve problems from um, very young, to see what they could do with very simple um, equipment and equipment, simple materials where they could learn from scratch. Yeah. Oh, then, sorry, mm, sorry, carry on. And lastly, we have a World and Nurse Collection. <laughs> sorry, quite a lot of things. Yeah. So um, <laughs> World and Nurse Collection is a collection that is also a first, a first for a national library where we are going to be bringing in books mm -hmm. that uh, covers every country in the world. So wow. you could come in and, you know, you not, you're not only exposed to stories, but you're exposed to stories and culture and information from every single country, all grouped into regions. So we have one for Oceania, one for Europe, one for Asia, one for Americas, and it's all there on level two. Just wonderful. I've been past the building. I haven't visited yet, but I will. It is a magnificent building. Just another example of why we have the greatest public library system in the world. Mm. I say that unashamedly. Mm. And now the new one at Pongal, Fantastic. You've introduced a range of new accessible features to cater to persons with disabilities. Michael, I know as you're part of the advisory committee, that's your area. Talk a little bit about these, what you've done to the library to accommodate folks with disabilities. And Michael, we are going to get to you in that comment in just a moment. But first, we have a very, very important announcement coming to you from the SC. DF. Michael, let's come back to you. As I was saying before, you're introducing a new range of accessible features to cater to persons with disabilities. It's wonderful. Tell us a bit about that. Well, you've just heard Verena and you've heard the passion in her voice. And mm -hmm. that really was the passion of the entire NLB team who was working on this project. Um, the vision was set and I think NLB appointed a committee uh, which I ch had the honor of chairing, involving um, a, a very uh, diverse and inclusive group of people uh, who actually had experience in different aspects of uh, looking after or working with uh, persons with disability. So we, we had that very strong starting point. And of course, uh, we worked together on many details. Um, and I, I think at the point in time, we might have driven the NLB folks a bit wild because there's a whole long list. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, for example, the idea of calm pods was introduced for the first time in the library. And what's That's that? That's really for uh, any children who might have breakdowns. Oh. So instead, uh, and some of them might have breakdowns and might be very loud. Yeah. So these calm pods were introduced so that the parent could bring the child inside to calm the, the child out. A calm pod. What does that look like? Um, it's literally like a pod. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very calm, right? Yes, okay, it's very calm. good name. <laughs> but uh, I, I think the, the folks at NLB thought that they would might introduce some murals to make it a, a little bit more interesting inside. And that was where I think the committee advised and said, maybe not so, because you want the kids to calm down. Yeah. So you don't want to excite them too much. And, yeah. and then I think the committee also talked about accessible icons uh, for both the facilities and collection itself. Mm. And we even went into the software, talking about the, the digital content, especially for uh, those with visual impairment. Uh, but we were so on the ball. And as I said, we really were on the ball. And thanks to the committee members, we checked the height of shelves. We checked the table heights of the borrowing stations. Yep. We even went into the corners and made sure they're rounded. And we check the doors and excess uh, widths, et cetera, for the doors, and even down to the colors 
of, of the whole library because I, I we think wanted we, it to be calm. I was going to say, I think we could use a calm pod in here. Yeah, I was thinking Sometimes, that. yeah. <laughs> when your committee's finished. Do you have an extra one? You can bring it on over. <laughs> we'll have the rounded corners and the colors and the calm pods. It just sounds wonderful. It's, it does. It, it, what an amazing space. Mm -hmm. And 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 Singapore has always been good about taking, uh, in recent years, taking people with disabilities uh, into account but i'm particularly interested in that what was the thinking around you know really focusing on folks that have uh, you know physical and, and possibly emotional uh, challenges uh, verena what, what was that look like looking so like? um nlb has got a history of you know reaching out to um the singaporeans and to the citizens to see how you know we could always um be relevant hmm. um, to their needs of today. So um, a few years back, so we looked at our the people that have been coming in, and we asked ourselves, who are the are those who don't? Hmm. And it's the disability community. Right. Yeah, they don't come in. We don't see them. So we so then um, a few years back, then they, they said, let's let's let try something out. We have Pongo Library. We know it's going to be big. Then why don't we use the space, capitalize on it, and see and dream big see what needs to what yeah. do we need to do let's try it out but and essentially uh, pongo will be a mi mega pilot they're going to try out all these services they're going to see what works what doesn't work what needs to be tweaked and mm. then we'll see how then we could offer this in the rest of the libraries as well it's a great location awesome. because pongo is a relatively new town mm. young families as we know so it's great i want to know a little bit more about this accessible membership mm. because it ties in very nicely with what you were saying maybe verena first and then get michael's take on what the accessible membership looks like from his perspective mm. so the accessible membership uh it's uh, something that what we did a few years back was that we not only got the advisory committee we also knew we couldn't do this alone we needed to engage the disability community we need to find out from them what works what doesn't work what's missing yeah. and so one of the things is um they would like to see a longer loan period and and so that you know uh, making a trip down to the library need not be so often and also, uh, they also like to see that you know, there are also some problems in maybe getting to the library or accessing, um, finding the books that they need in the library space. Mm. So with that, we decided, okay, let's try out this uh, accessible membership where we'll give you that, we'll give you a longer loan period. And uh, we'll allow you to reserve items free of charge. So everybody else need to borrow yes. a reserve an item for $1.57. Yeah. Um, for accessible members, free. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Because yeah. it's just that, isn't it? Accessibility is a, it's difficult for these guys sometimes. Yeah. And by the time they get there, they can't get the book they want and so on and so on. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Michael, as you were uh, looking looking to, uh, you know, lend guidance and your experience, uh, you, you do a lot more than uh, just work with the library. Uh, you're also uh, working um, with the, the future cities and, and looking at development of these things. Does this Pungo library uh, look like what the future needs to look like for publicly accessible spaces, uh, libraries, and, and other places as well? Well, uh, for us over at the Center for Livable Cities, we do a lot of futures uh, research, rightfully, yeah. as you said, and looking especially at some issues on inclusivity, uh, dementia-friendly neighborhoods, uh, getting the community involved, and also aging in place. Mm. So definitely, I think the Pong, what we've done now at the Pongo Library is really, as uh, Verena has said, a, a sandbox. It's a huge sandbox that we can actually apply, not only to a library, but also to, to buildings, to schools, etc. Because even the ideas of the Compod, what type of colors, etc., uh, are learning points for not only the library, but all of Singapore. And actually, it can be uh, perpetuated to many developments, uh, yeah. especially, um, you know, uh, developments that may want to uh, encourage more persons with disability in like museums, the art galleries, etc. And, and it's really going to be the massive pilot, as Verena said, and all of us can actually learn from it. Absolutely well, fascinating. And yeah. Michael, the people you mentioned, museums, galleries, building developers, they are regular listeners of our show. They tend to make up the majority of our audience. What does that kind of space look like? I mean, give them some examples. You mentioned the pods there. You mentioned the colors. What does a futuristic space for folks with disabilities look like? What should it include? Um, well, there's no straight answer to this mm. because uh, some, some uh, for example, may say <clears throat> large volume spaces may, may not be uh, welcoming to some persons with disability because uh, you, you may feel overwhelmed by that space, in which case you may need lower spaces. And, and this can be seen, for example, in the first story of uh, the Pongo Library, because there are lower spaces, there are seating areas which are slowly lower in height, uh, curved and very cozy. Hmm. So, so this, these are some of the issues that could be applied. I mean, think of designing a lobby space, for example. Do you really want this big lobby, which 
may be uncomfortable to some, or do you want to provide a variety of entrance spaces such that those that are uncomfortable in big spaces could come up through, uh, go in through a smaller entrance with lower ceilings, etc. So again, like I said, it's a test bed. Uh, we, we don't have the exact answers or the direct models that can apply, but we're all looking at Pongo Library. Yeah. I sorry, I Please. do have something to add. Yeah, I think in. um on futuristic spaces, besides the building development, what's very important is really the hardware. Mm, so absolutely. the hardware comprising people who are working in all these spaces, be it arts, museums, gal galleries and building shopping malls, etc. Um part of the whole setting up of Pongo Library is really the training of the staff from from the cleaners down to the shelving staff to um, to myself to our our librarians all every single one of us needed to know and understand the needs of the person with disability in order to enable them to feel comfortable and hopefully they will come yeah. and here's a shout out to everybody who's listening we are trained so come and give us a chance <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> on that point what has been the feedback so far um, feedback so far, the parents, uh, the caregivers have been coming to size up the space. Oh, yes. smart. Yes, so they come yeah. first. And yes, uh, they've given us, um, they were surprised that the volunteers themselves are even even know how to um, describe and, and use the correct terminology. Mm. Yeah, so we are very proud of that. A very unusual <laughs> space, and, and we want to wish you all the best. I'm looking forward to getting up there and, and having a look at it. Verena Lee, the assistant director of the Pungal Regional Library, and Michael Coe, the chairperson of the NLB Advisory Committee. As always, a pleasure to talk to anybody related to our library system here in Singapore. We, we have often over the years on this show. And, and thank you for being with us, and we certainly hope it goes well and really becomes that, that role model for libraries to come. Thanks for being with us today on Money FM. Thank, thank you. you very much.